Hey guys, today I'm going to go over three different CTA creations for you. If you're not familiar with what a CTA is, it basically stands for call to action. It's typically a graphic element at the end of like a marketing video, a commercial video that includes the company's logo and then some other text, whether that be a phone number, a website, a tagline, something like that. So today I'm going to be creating these three different CTA looks. Hopefully I give you a little inspiration for your own projects. The thing that all three of these CTAs have in common is that the logo and text relate to each other in some way. They're interacting together um, and that all of the action happens real quick. So that's usually the criteria for a CTA. All right, let's dive right into the first look. I'm going to bring in my logo here, just a PNG copy of the horizontal version of my company's logo. The first thing I'm going to do is go over to filters, then distortion, and we're going to select disc warp and you can see what the disc warp does. It sort of bloats the center of my logo. I'm going to raise up the radius in my inspector window on this disc warp to 300. And we're going to actually move this disc warp. I'll just kind of give you a preview here. If we raise it up on the Y value, see what it does. It gives some curvature to our logo. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Now, what I'm about to do is something I could do with the overshoot behavior, but I'm not going to do that. And you'll see why later I'm actually going to manually keyframe this action. Um, if you are not familiar with keyframing, it's a super important skill to have. I have a whole video about it. I will link to it here and down below. But if you know what keyframing is, stick with me. All right, so let's move our playhead in the timeline to about one second in. And I'm going to create a keyframe here on the center line in the disc warp window in the inspector. And I'm going to raise up this Y value really high. Okay, and now I'm gonna arrow over, let's say 16 frames. So we'll go to 116 in our timeline. I'm going to add another keyframe and we're gonna lower this Y value. Let's go down to like 550. And now let's arrow over to, let's say 128 in our timeline. And we're gonna add another keyframe on that Y value. And we're gonna bring it up to 3200. And then we're going to go, let's say 208. Another keyframe. Let's make this Y value 650. Let's head a little further down our timeline. This value 2500. Another keyframe will go 750. So what I've done, if you look here in my timeline, these red dots represent my keyframes. You can see they get closer and closer together the further down the timeline we go. So it's sort of replicating gravity with like a bouncing ball. I'm going to select my disc warp here so I can show you the values of the keyframes. You see how they get the peaks and dips reduce over time. If you're not seeing this keyframe editor, I'm always pointing this out to you guys. You need to click these three little diamonds on the middle of your screen all the way to the right, and that will reveal your keyframe editor. And from this point here, these are linear moves. You can see they're like jagged edges, like a sawtooth. I'm going to select all my keyframes and I'm going to right click and let's change the interpolation from linear to BZA. And now look what happens. See, they're all curved. I'm going to play this back so we can see how it looks. Perfect. So it looks like a bouncing ball. Now what we need to do is add the text that's going to fall from the top of the frame, landing on our logo, causing this bounce. So I'm going to just go over to my text tool at the center of my screen, and I'm going to type in my website, just kind of anywhere in the canvas. And I'm going to change the weight. I'm on the Lato, Lato, however you say it, font. I'm going to change the weight to bold because I want this text to look heavy. And I'm going to drag the text element in my timeline. I could put it at the beginning of my timeline. It doesn't really matter because it's going to start out of frame. So now we're going to keyframe this text as well. I'm going to reposition it in my inspector window. So it's centered, I'm going to center the format of it. 
So now that we've got the alignment of our text centered, let's start keyframing this motion. So basically what I want this text to do is start out of frame. So I'm going to queue up my playhead, let's say at 20 frames in on my timeline. I'm going to head on over to properties in the inspector window. I'm going to add a keyframe at the position line and I'm going to run up my Y value. So this is out of frame. And then what I need to do is match the position of these keyframes that we made with our disc warp. So this is why I didn't do the overshoot behavior because with the overshoot behavior, you don't get these like very specific keyframes that you can match with other elements. This is why it's helpful to have the keyframes because it's a really good visual tool. Whereas with the overshoot behavior, I wouldn't really be able to match it as well. Okay, so now let's start keyframing this text. We've got our first keyframe on the disc warp at one second in, and that's where there's no distortion in our logo. Let's go a little bit past that, maybe halfway between our two keyframes on our disc warp. Do you see that? Let's create a, a keyframe here in the inspector window under properties on the position line. And I'm gonna drive up that Y value so that text is out of frame. Now let's arrow over to the second keyframe in our disc warp. Let's create another keyframe with our text on the Y value and I'm going to bring it down here so that it looks like it's pushing the logo down. Now let's head up to the next keyframe in our disc warp, cue up our playhead there, add a keyframe with our text on the Y. Let's bring it up, but not so far up that it goes out of frame, maybe here. And again, next keyframe on the disc warp, make a keyframe on the Y value with our text. Let's bring it down again and so on and so forth. And with the last keyframe, it's gonna end up resting right on our text. In my particular case, the logo here has this L and this D, so this website text is gonna rest on top of those letters. And I think for good measure, I'm gonna add a couple more keyframes to my text. So right now it's resting on the L and the D. I'm gonna head on over a few more keyframes. And I'm gonna add some keyframes to that text on the Y. I'm gonna raise it up just a hair and then go over a couple more frames and have it rest again. I'm gonna give that a little more action than I'm giving the logo. It gives it a little more personality. Okay, and now that that motion is perfected, I'm going to make a few more adjustments to the alignment of my text. I really want the P in the website to line up with the outer edge of this L. Now, I can't just grab this text and move it around. It's gonna mess up all my keyframes here. What I need to do to make these final adjustments is to select the text in my project pane, right click and group it. And now I can change the position of the text without affecting all those keyframes I made. So I'm gonna zoom way in on my canvas so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna head over to properties and I'm just going to line these guys up. All right, that's our first CTA. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, just like before, I'm gonna start with the horizontal version of my logo. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do with this logo is shrink it down a hair. And the next thing I need to do is change my anchor point. So you can find your anchor point tool here in the center of your screen on this drop down with all your different cursors, or you can right click over the element in your canvas and select anchor point here. And you'll see you get these green and red arrows and this blue dot. We need to move the arrows so that the blue dot is in the bottom corner of our logo. So now that we've got our anchor point in the bottom right corner, let's head on over to the inspector window and I'm going to drop down the rotation arrow and we're going to rotate this 90 degrees on the Z value. And then we're going to add a keyframe there and then let's arrow over, let's say 12 frames, add another keyframe and we're going to change that value to zero. So we're back to horizontal. 
Okay, now we're gonna head down, down to the keyframe editor. We're gonna change the interpolation on this, on these keyframes to ease both on both of them. And I'm gonna add a color effect as well. So I'm gonna select my logo in my timeline or my project pane. Let's head on over to filters, color. Let's go to colorize and Cooper play hit to the very beginning of our timeline. And let's remap the blacks to white. Let's remap the whites to white. So our logo is just totally white. And let's add a keyframe here on the mix. Let's drag our playhead down in our timeline, almost to the point where the logo has landed. Let's add a keyframe on mix. And then let's align our playhead with the keyframe with our rotation here. Add another keyframe on the mix line on your colorize filter and dial down the mix. So almost like when it lands, it jolts it into color. Now let's add our text element. I'm gonna use my text tool in the center of the screen. I'm gonna type out my website. I'm gonna change my cursor from anchor point to transform. And I'm gonna tuck the text under here. So it aligns with the S in my logo. I'm gonna queue up that text so it's aligned with where my logo lands. So this rotational keyframe here in my logo. And I'm going to get my anchor point cursor back. So right click here in the canvas. Let's go to anchor point. And now I want to have my anchor point be centered on my text and at the very top of it. So the hinge point is at the top of my text. And to this now we're gonna add a behavior. Let's go on up to the top center of our screen, behaviors, parameter, and overshoot. And on apply to here, we're gonna hit this drop down properties, transform rotation, and we are going to rotate on the X axis for this. I'm going to head down to my timeline now and I'm going to shrink the length of my overshoot behavior. And on our start value, we're gonna change the start value to 90. So we're just seeing like, let's say the tops of these letters. And then we want the end value to be zero. And so what's happening is, is when the logo lands, it triggers this text to come out, but there's not really enough action. Like it's very slow the way it moves. On the overshoot behavior in our inspector window, let's play with the ramp duration. I'm gonna dial it down and now look at what's happening in my keyframe editor. See how much bouncier this has gotten. And I think to give this some extra life one more time, let's head on back over to our logo. I'm gonna arrow over a couple more frames, add another keyframe on the Z rotation. Let's have it come down just a hair. So I'm at 1.1 there. And then I'm gonna arrow over one more frame in my timeline, add another keyframe on the Z value and hit the zero. Let's see how that feels. Yeah, I like that little extra bounce at the end. It gives it a little something extra. Let's take one more look at it. All right, that was CTA2. Are you ready for CTA3? This is a pretty common look. I see this a lot. It's very popular right now. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay guys, for this third look, I'm going to use the stacked version of my logo. And the first thing we're gonna do is figure out our end composition here before we add in all the animation. So what I'm going to do is bring this logo screen left and I'm gonna add my text on the right side of the screen. And on this particular CTA, I'm actually gonna have two lines of text. I just think it's gonna help us balance a little bit better here. And while I'm formatting my text here, guys, if you're enjoying this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know. Give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you never miss a future upload and drop some comments while you're at it. Okay, now to help me align my logo and my text to make sure I'm really in good shape, let's turn on the grid. So here's our center line on the grid right here. And so I'm gonna use this to kind of just fine tune the placement of my elements. All right, now I'm gonna turn off that grid because I find it distracting. All right, here we go. This is going to be the end placement 
of all of my elements. So the first thing I want to do is make a keyframe for where I want these to land because I've taken the time to align them perfectly, right? I don't wanna mess that up. So what we're gonna do is work backwards with these keyframes. So I'm going to queue up my playhead to one second in in my timeline and I'm going to first select my logo. I'm gonna add a keyframe here for position and I'm going to now select my text and I'm also going to add a keyframe in here for position. All right, now let's work backward. I am going to head back half a second in my timeline and I'm going to make keyframes again on the position line. Um, let's start with the text and I'm going to actually change the X value to all the way over here. And now let's head on down to our logo, add a keyframe at the exact same point and move our X value all the way here. Got it? There's our motion. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is add a line in between my logo and my text right in the center of our screen. So to make a perfectly straight line, hold down the shift key as you drag your cursor in your canvas. And then over here in the properties window, let's just make sure we're centered up there. I'm gonna change that value to zero and also the Y value. Now let's head on over to shape. I think this line is way too wide to start. Let's make it nice and thin. I'm gonna change the color to something I'm gonna pull from my logo. And now I want to make sure my line is at the beginning of my timeline. And I want the line to draw in from the center to the ends at equal speed. So I'm gonna queue up my playhead to the first keyframes we made on our logo and text. And let's add keyframes here under the inspector window for last point offset and first point offset. And let's leave those values as they are, but the, let's head back, I don't know, 10 frames and add keyframes again on those lines, but make each one of these percentages 50. So you'll see what happens here, the line's gone and then it draws on. So I'm probably gonna play with the timing of this line later, but for now, let's draw our attention back to the logo. We're gonna mask off the logo so that when we're at the start of our project, it's invisible on this side, so it's not visible. What we wanna do is group our logo so that we can apply the mask independent of the movement we've created here with our keyframes. So I'm gonna select the logo in my project pane, right click, hit group. Now on the group level, not the actual logo, I'm going to add a mask, a rectangle mask, and I'm just gonna draw over here, this mask, and then I'm gonna select invert mask in my inspector window. And I actually need to make sure my mask is right in line with my line. Okay, and now we need to do the same thing for the text. Again, you need to group the text, be selected on the group in your project pane, and then add the mask, invert it. You could actually draw the other side and not invert it. I just always do it that way out of habit. And actually, I think the timing of the line on that is great. It looks great. All right, there's your third CTA look. What did you guys think of these? Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments and let me know anything else you wanna see because I get a lot of inspiration from you guys and I love it. Thanks for creating with me today. I will see you again.